The Feast of Seven Fishes is the beloved Southern Italian tradition of cooking seafood dishes on Christmas Eve. They traveled across the Atlantic with the Italian men and women who came to America looking for opportunity. And the people of Marion County loved the feast so much that they created a festival dedicated to preserving this link to the area's immigrant past. For 10 years, the Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival in Fairmont, West Virginia, has worked hard to perpetuate this culinary, spiritual, and cultural holiday celebration. Welcome to the Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival Christmas Special. It has exceeded our expectations. I mean, we had no idea it would you know, become such a beloved event and has become Marion County's holiday homecoming. 10 years is an important milestone because I think that it, it establishes that this is a festival that's, that has been part of the community and it's something that people look forward to each year. It's not huge, but it's so authentic. Every booth is authentic. It shows how important the culture and heritage of, of Italian Americans are in, in North Central West Virginia. Every year we do a cooking school based on the Seven Fishes tradition and we bring in different local chefs, self-taught home cooks, and we ask you to share with the community your traditional dishes that you would do for your family on Christmas Eve. My name is Marion Olinger. What I love about doing the uh, Feast of Seven Fishes is that it's always a, a glorious chaos. Every year you never know what's going to happen. He's traveled the world. He's had multiple restaurants. He was just named West Virginia uh, Chef of the Year. He's just a renegade in the kitchen. They asked me to actually finally do a fish dish. We were doing a grilled polenta with guanciale and uh, walleye. Uh, what we did there is we did the, uh, the polenta, which is of course in a local dish here, and it, it's also very Italian. And then we did the guanciale, which is just West Virginia smoked hog jowl also. That's a you know, perfect thing there. He is the only person I ever allow to have a little meat freedom on my menu because traditionally the meal is meat free. And then we did the walleye. We went ahead and poached it earlier. There are obvious limitations to how much we can cook here. So we made the polenta ahead. I've poached the walleye ahead and we have already cooked off and diced up all the guanciale. So we're just basically assembling everything. I am going to cook some herb, uh, cut some herbs for show though, so at least we'll look like we're doing something up here. Mm -hmm. We can go ahead and start doing some of these. Brenda, I can do that for you. It's heavy. Go ahead and cut up some more of these. And I wanted to do something that was indigenous. I didn't want to do something that came from, from the ocean. I wanted to do something that was from here. Um, the idea was you know, the folks would have come here. What would they have found that was here to adapt to the dishes that they had back in the old country? And you know, walleye are fairly plentiful in our rivers up here. And uh, it seemed like a nice choice. And it worked really well. I was really happy with it. And we're going to sprinkle a little of the guanciale and the last we top it off with some herbs. Again, nothing traditional about this. I've spent the last years doing everything I can do to turn tradition upside down and inside out around here. The idea is to use traditional ingredients and try to do something different with them. Everybody else does dishes that their grandparents did. I do dishes that are what people would probably create when they came here is the idea behind it. Vince Libanotti is another dear friend of ours, an Italian gentleman who loves to cook. And Vince's parents actually immigrated from Italy. I mean, he's, he's second generation here. He did a fish chutney. It's easier to call it a fish chutney than the actual name. It's pesce bianco con cipolla pomodoro e ovelette. So fish chutney is a lot easier. It fits on the paper. All right, right now I got um, garlic, yellow onions, and some red onions. I'm going to caramelize them a little bit. Typically I use a little bit of butter with my olive oil. 
The recipe calls for whole tomatoes. I used uh, diced tomatoes this time. Um, you can use any type of white fish, cod, whiting. Well, and I think it's also a good recipe to round out if you're trying to have seven different fishes and so you can play with that. I mean, just like Robert's soup. Tonight we served it as an appetizer, so you got a, a one to two ounce portion of fish. Typically, Christmas Eve at my house, my mom will do a filet and she'll serve it as, as a side dish. All right. I don't know if you can see it, but the onions have, uh, they've sweated a little bit. Typically, after I caramelize the onions, I'll deglaze the pan with a little bit of red wine before I put the tomatoes in. They're not really as dark as I would like them, but due to time, we will move on. Due to the fish breaking down, you want to add it last. Cook your onions in your sauce, okay. fresh basil, and then the fish. Now, my household, we don't waste anything, so we're going to overload this pan and cook all the fish. The last thing for this dish is the raisins. And you typically don't want to put those in till 15 to 20 minutes after the dish is cooked. When your fish is cooked. Now, are, are you pre-plumping your raisins there, Vince? My raisins are pre-plumped. What did you plump them in? I just took them out of the box. Well, that's not plumping them. No, I didn't put. <laughs> yeah, you got to plump right, those raisins. My raisins are pre-plumped. Uh-huh. That's it, you reminded me, thank you. And again, you can play with that recipe. You can use different types of white fish. Um, and every year we try to have at least seven different dishes to play on the Feast of the Seven Fishes, you know, uh, namesake. It's just a really versatile, nice little side dish. Every, every Christmas Eve, we'd start about 5 o'clock and we'd go until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning and that fish would just roll out, the people would just roll in and, you know, it, it, it was what happened every year. You yeah. know, all of the cousins, all the aunts, all the uncles, all the neighbors, all the friends, everybody, everybody was downstairs because you didn't go upstairs. Everybody was downstairs in the party. Well, another thing that I really love about the festival cooking school is that the people who are part of the audience, you know, they fall in love with it and they come every year and then they're like, we want to cook, we want to cook. So Joyce Petrola Kefover contacted me. She does uh, the feast every year with her brother. This is just something I came up with. It's not a traditional dish. We usually do the tuna sauce and the eel and all of that, but the kids were all like, we need something we can eat. We just kind of arrived at this. We, my brother and I just wanted some different things so we were looking just for something different. So this is just a shrimp tortellini. What I wrote down, I think I said three tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of oil. That's way too much, unless you really like it that rich. I am not a chef. I just like to cook. Uh, you just start with your pan, butter, oil, press your garlic in, get that nice and done, add your shrimp, roasted red peppers, lemon pepper, crushed pepper, whatever you like, season it, then put in your, um, I use cheese tortellini tonight, just put it through the water a little bit just to warm it up and put it into your sauce. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is top it with some grated cheese. And that's it. All right. The Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival Christmas Special is brought to you in part by the Marion County Visitor Center. This program will be available to view on Facebook immediately following this broadcast. Just visit and like us at facebook.com slash Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival. The Marion County Visitor Center is excited to bring you the first ever Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival Christmas Special. Every season of Marion County is beautiful and filled with things to see and experience. In the wintertime, that includes the Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival. 
The festival has become a beloved tradition in the area and is a key example of authentic traditions that we call Italy and Appalachia. So from all of us at the Marion County Visitor Center, Merry Christmas and enjoy the show. Merry Christmas and the happiest of holidays to your family from ours at Fairmont Federal Credit Union. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from Arts and Antiques Marketplace, a unique shopping experience on Adams Street in historic downtown Fairmont, featuring artworks, antiques, and collectibles from over 80 local artists and dealers. Harper's Ferry belongs to you. Thomas Jefferson said the view from here is worth a trip across the Atlantic. Obviously it is rich with American history, but the experience extends way beyond that. This is not a mass produced town. When people come in my shop, they tell me we want something real, something authentic. You can't get any more real than Harper's Ferry. The Potomac and the Shenandoah Rivers are a great place to live and work, just like a big watery playground. I love fishing and walking on the towpath. The Appalachian Trail runs through here, so you see hikers all the time. If it wasn't for Harper's Ferry, the Civil Rights Movement probably would never start. We bring the kids here because it's not just history from a book, it's living history. Clearly, I'm not Italian. Well, like we say, at the festival, everyone's Italian, and we've adopted Joel as our, our little adopted Italian baby. Uh, this evening, I made a pasta with white clams, um, so a linguine, really, really simple, sauteed garlic um, and olive oil, add a little bit of crushed red pepper, and I add anchovies for a special sort of twist on it, just to give it a little more umami, and then you cook it down with white wine and add clams. Wait till they just open up uh, and then mount it with some butter and some uh, parsley and toss in your pasta. Really simple, but kind of a, a great dish for, for the masses. So our clams are almost open. I'm Those gonna go ahead and just throw in the, um, the pasta. So this is the par-cooked pasta. So I'm gonna finish the pasta in the sauce. Obviously a, a fun traditional Italian technique. I'm just gonna stir this around for a moment. And that's one thing like that a lot of people don't do. They just take a lot of times a mound of pasta and pour sauce over it. You always, when you're fixing pasta, like what I do, you want to finish it for a minute or two over heat, you know, just so all the flavors meld together. And I mean, don't you think? Yeah, and plus with this being par-cooked pasta, you're going to get a little more of that starch development pulling out from the pasta. So your sauce is going to become a little silkier, a little smoother, and it's also going to meld everything together. Black, crack black pepper on top of this, and then we'll finish it with um, non-fat butter. I think um, in today's day and age, uh, we all are always looking for instant gratification in the internet and, you know, texting and Instagram and Facebook, and it's so refreshing to see such great and, and historical sort of family traditions passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation. And these recipes and these memories and this heritage live through family members and friends and now with the cooking school and sort of everyone uh, outside, inside and, and all the way around really learning about the Feast of Seven Fishes and taking something home with them that they can make it their own. Foodways are things that we that come from us culturally, like, um, you know, if you're Italian, the food that you grew up with, but it's also, I think, the most identifiable thing to your heritage. You carry those traditions on, you pass them down, and they still, even though you are, you know, now maybe, like myself, half Italian, German, uh, Swiss, you know, all these little mixtures of things, um, 
the food that I grew up with and that I remember, is, it still defines who I am. The Festival Kachina was a really great experience for me to be able to see so many local professional and non-professional cooks come together to cook traditional Italian dishes, but specifically Italian dishes that were known for the southern area of Italy and that have been adapted for West Virginia and for Appalachia. I think that it's great that that families have been able to use from, from what West Virginia has to offer, they've been able to incorporate that into their traditional family dishes. Well, it's really important for me every year uh, because of our foodways and trying to preserve them is to do a multi-generational demonstration. So my daughter came in and did something with my, my niece, the Italian cream soda demonstration. And the basic ingredients are a flavored syrup, fruity, seltzer water and half and half and ice. So you just do a little bit of syrup in the bottom. And then you just fill it with some seltzer water. And then you just top it off with a little bit of half and half at the top. <laughs> and that is how you make Italian cream soda at home without all the chemicals. <laughs> But, you know, I want to focus more on those types of presentations where you have friends and family uh, come up and work on a recipe together because that's what you would be doing on Christmas Eve in your own home. My name is Robert Germano. I'm originally from Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Tonight I'm going to make a meal that was traditional with my family, and it was zuppa de pesce, or taligegla della pesce, which is, in other words, just fish soup. When I was younger, my mother always used whiting, and then one year I went home, and by gosh, she was using orange ruffy. I, don't know, I thought they invented a fish. You heat up some oil, and you take some garlic, and you take an onion, very simple, just Peel your garlic, peel your onion. I pulled something out of the cupboard that is uh, pretty old. And the younger people here aren't going to recognize what it is. Take your garlic, and what I put out is the vegematic. Is that what this is? Hold on, where's the, where's the, there's a piece missing. Anyway, just for the show, that's all you got to do. Just use your vegematic, and by God, it'll chop everything up for you. All right, and just throw it in your oil and get it started. Get this sauteed to it returns uh, lucent, translucent. You would add your diced tomatoes. Get that going. You would add your water. Okay. We had chopped tomatoes, garlic, and onion, a little bit of olive oil, and cauliflower. And also with golden raisins instead of sugar to sweeten the dish. Say that recipe actually came from my mother's side of the family. One thing that I remember most about Christmas Eve, not only going with my mother to the stores to buy the fish and all the ingredients, was my grandfather, who sat at the end of the dinner table with his homemade jug of wine next to him. And every one of his sons and daughters had to come and visit him on Christmas Eve. And he would fall asleep in that chair. And they would come in and rub his shoulder and say, pop, pop. And he would reach down and grab that jug of wine and pour them a glass. And he'd look at him and he'd say, Buon Natale. Celebrate the holiday season with the perfect gift from Tuscan Sun Spa and Salon. Stop in for a relaxing break or reserve a holiday get-together while enjoying our legendary spa treatments. Tuscan's Aveda Salon awaits to give you a whole new look. The Tuscan Marketplace is packed with great gifts from Vera Bradley, Spartina, and great new jewelry and scarves. Our gift cards can be instantly printed at TuscanSunSpaAndSalon.com. 
The Factory Digital Filmmaking Program at Douglas Education Center offers tomorrow's filmmakers the tools they need to succeed today. Students at the factory learn by doing. In fact, they created the very show you are watching now. Visit dec.edu for more information. Merry Christmas and the happiest of holidays to your family from ours at Fairmont Federal Credit Union. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from Arts and Antiques Marketplace, a unique shopping experience on Adams Street in historic downtown Fairmont, featuring artworks, antiques, and collectibles from over 80 local artists and dealers. County Visitor Center is excited to bring you the first ever Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival Christmas Special. Every season in Marion County is beautiful and filled with things to see and experience. In the winter time, that includes the Feast of the Seven Fishes Festival. The festival has become a beloved tradition in the area and is a key example of authentic traditions that we call Italy and Appalachia. So from all of us at the Marion County Visitor Center, Merry Christmas and enjoy the show. from uh, Heston Farms. Tommy Thompson is the chef of the Foxfire restaurant and they brought in uh, tiramisu and did a great job. First, you have to make a sabe yan, which is a classic Italian dessert sauce. You take a half a cup of sugar and you whisk it into eight egg yolks. And then you're going to uh, whisk that over a double boiler. It takes a few moments. Also, you need to slowly add one cup of Marsala wine. You gotta keep on whisking it the whole time or else the eggs will cook and you'll have scrambled eggs with Marsala wine. And you wanna slowly add the Marsala wine or that will also curdle the eggs. And then you just keep on whisking. And what you're looking for is what we call a ribbon to form on the top. And that's just, you want, you want to... Uh, it's really starting to thicken up there. Yeah, it started it out thick. really thin and... You want it to get thick and you want, when you go, when you move your whisk like this, you want it to stay on top for at least five seconds. It's not quite there yet. About another minute and it should be ready. Okay, it should be ready. See how it sits on top like that? Next, we're gonna, we're gonna add one pound of mascarpone cheese, which you can get at the grocery store, into your sabrayan. Okay. So now you fold this in? So now you fold the whipped cream into your sabayon. You start out with a little bit at first. So you've got a layer of lady fingers already down? Yep. Now do you dip those yeah. before you yeah, put yeah. them down? Yeah. Okay. So you do one one layer layer of lady fingers, then a layer of your sabayon and whipped cream. And then for the topping, just some uh, cocoa powder. And there you go. Tiramisu. and did a great job, and as one person in the audience said, this tiramisu changed my life. Normally, uh, this dish was prepared by my great-grandmother, Zabela Oliverio, uh, in Greentown, in Reesville, West Virginia. Our daughter's named after her, uh, and she did it uh, using a wood-burning stove oven in the basement. How many people when you had Christmas Eve had it in the basement? Are we the only ones? I didn't think, yeah, there's a few of us, right? 
My husband had the bright idea that it would be really great to do stuffed calamari for 125 people, but I ended up stuffing it. Shannon, how do we get started here? We start uh, with um, the olive oil? Uh, he cooks one day a year, and uh, it takes me then about a week to clean my kitchen. I'm going to turn this over and let your dad assist you with this. I really do only cook one day a year, and that just wasn't the day. So this is my dad, so you're going to start mixing up the mixtures. So I like a crushed tomato. Robert Germano actually gave me a little trick, so I put a little tiny pinch of baking soda in my red sauce now. It really cuts that acidic level down a little bit. Again, Bob's grandpa taught me how to make this, and he used breadcrumbs, so I use breadcrumbs today, but I have used um, just toasted, you know, stale Italian bread and, you know, chopped it up real fine like I would do with my turkey and used it that way. Again, I sauteed uh, onions, garlic, celery, a couple hot peppers, uh, some shallots, and then put like red pepper flakes, so two eggs, Parmesan cheese, and then you really just sort of uh, mix that up, stuff it, which you can see how time consuming it is. When you cook them, the stuffing's always going to swell and expand. So we stuff those. I would salt, pepper, and add. Um, you can use stock, milk. You just really, you cover it. Now I do it in layers sometimes, like it depends on like what I have. And then I'll just layer the sauce on. And then I'll do a layer of Parmesan cheese and the herbs that we found on the floor and bake it for an hour. I love it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's mass chaos. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but we, we have fun. The only thing, like I said, is the week-long cleanup job afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam and Art. Everybody sing. Thank you very much.